everyone, welcome to Watch It Paint It. Today I'm going to be painting a bone fetch model from the game Fire Team Zero. This was a request from Stephen on Patreon, so I'm just fulfilling his request. I think we wanted to see some fire painting, so I'm just going to show you the paints I'm using. Starting with Gory Red, that's a nice dark red by Vallejo, and then we're going to use Bloody Red next. So I'm just trying to show you the range of colours I'm going to bring this fire across, starting with the darkest on the left, moving up the lightness scale i guess so next is the hot orange here and uh, that's the the mid range that i'm going to be going for and then towards the edge of the flames we're going to be moving towards this orange fiery color i'm going to be using vallejo game color just because i've not primed the model and then the final color will be this sun yellow quite a bright yellow just on the very tippity tops of all the flames so hopefully you can see moving across all the colors it's getting brighter and brighter and as i mentioned yeah just towards the edge of the flames so there's the little color range we're going to be using I'm sure these are available in lots of different brands. So just be aiming for something like that, about five colors, and then maybe just an even brighter yellow if you have one available just on the very, very end, just for the very tips of the flames and just showing you the colors. So let's go on with some painting. Yeah, as aforementioned, I have coated, base coated primed this in Gory Red by Vallejo. It's a game color. It works as a base coat and a primer in one. So you can see that on the left there as as the model was just after I covered it entirely, watered down a little bit, just all over the model, just as a primer and that color that I want the base to be. Then I'm gonna get a little bit of bloody red out. I'm gonna be using my dry brush. Steve and I discussed for a while about how to do this model and he wanted to see some wet blending, but I think the way this model's sculpted, it's it, you know, it wants to be dry brushed. It's gonna be very, very easy if we just dry brush it. There's lots and lots of nooks and crannies, raised bits. You're just gonna be able to scrape your brush along and leave the paint on all of the raised parts of the model just really, really, really easily. So we're gonna start with bloody red, as I mentioned, and this is the one you wanna get the most paint on. Just scrape a little bit off. It's only even semi-dry brushing, I'd say. It's still, you can see it applying straight away quite easily to these raised parts. I'm just trying to leave the gory red in the very, very deepest recesses. We're going to be applying this bloody red basically to all of the raised bits quite heavily. I don't even mind if it goes in some of the recesses. I just want to make sure I'm just leaving that gory red as, as the shade, basically. I'm going to use no shade on this red whatsoever. So I'm just going to be using the gory red as the shade. So I just want to apply that all over. Then we're going to be taking a hot orange and doing a similar process, but we're going to be taking off a lot, a lot more of that paint onto my, my kitchen paper here, just making sure we're moving more and more towards dry brushing. You could see I stroked it, <laughs> stroked it a fair few more times there, making sure there's less paint. I'm gonna much, much lightlier brush this across. Still quite heavy though, you know, I've got another three colors to go after this. I wanna just keep applying lighter and lighter strokes, building it up on top of each other and getting that blend just to work really easily for me. So it's gonna be like, while I wet blending, but with no effort, like I'm just dragging a brush across the model and letting the model do all the work for me really here. And and you'll see at the end, it, it does work quite well. I, I'm certainly happy with it. And wait till you see how long this takes. There's, I can't, I don't know exactly, I've not actually played the game, but there's not that many models in the, in the box. So this is not gonna be a long time to paint all these ones up. Same process again, orange fire. You can even see I'm getting less paint out on the palette each time, scraping more off just applying less and less each time. So I don't really have that much to say other than uh, just just dry brush gentler each time with less paint and keep building up. Now I am moving towards the edge of the flames, making it lighter and lighter towards the edge. I looked at loads of pictures of flames before I did this and there were sort of two types of flames. I don't, I am not a pyromaniac. I'm not a fire expert. Um, <laughs> But I did look at some pictures and there was plenty where it was hotter in the center, brighter. Therefore, you want the yellows towards the center and, and moving darker towards the edges. But I saw lots of other flames where it's just light around the outside. I don't know what causes the two difference. I don't know if one's incorrect, but I feel like on a model, the way I'm painting it here does look quite nice and it's quite easy to achieve. So I went with that. The last color, the sun yellow, I think possibly off camera, I did use a, a bright yellow just for the very, very tips. So sort of a little speck on each tip of the flame just to give it a, make it pop out a little bit more. But it's the same process, just do the same. Just add another yellow. If this isn't bright enough for you, just get it nice and realistic. But 
you'll see that this looks decent as well as I do this. Uh, there's, there's honestly not that much more to say other than, well, um, so when, when I start this one model, when Stephen asked me to do it, Benson and I had a little conversation about it. And um, Benson thought this model maybe looked like an infant child burning. I think it's with a position it's in. It's a bit fetal position, isn't it? So, uh, <laughs> so I did ask Benson to paint this model, actually, but he wasn't able to get his brush to reach the model from his really, really high horse that he was sat on. And he, he wouldn't paint this model because it resembled an infant. Because I've got the actual model in front of me, I do think it's, it's just a normal size skeleton. Not that that's particularly better. Like somebody's burned. It's This is a dark game. I was reading the, the flavor text on this card and it's horrendous as well. You guys should check it out. Um, it's dark. Anyway, just showing you how that looks after all of that dry brushing. I think that looks that looks good, right? I'm 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 happy with it. Like that did not take me a lot of work, wasn't a lot of time, and that looks like flames to me. After that, I'm gonna try and make the, the skeleton look a little bit more charred. So I'm gonna be using Vallejo's dark flesh tone. This is a sort of really, really deep dark red, but possibly brown as well. It's, it looks good. It looks like a burnt red. If I, if I had to pick a colour for burnt red, it would be dark flesh tone. And I'm just going to very, very carefully apply this to the whole of the skeleton. Trying out some new brushes in this video as well. So that's something to pay some attention to. Let's see how this looks We're using these. These are Rosemary & Co brushes. I'm just trying those out. I need some new brushes trying to trying to work out what's great. And obviously I need some practice with them. So this is a great model to practice on and see how I get on with them. And at some point I'll do a review of the brushes. If anyone would like to see that, let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know if you think this model is a little bit dark, a little bit controversial. I'd love to know what you guys think. It's, it seems weird to me that it was even a consideration for Benson and I to have to talk about it in a board game. We're like, oh, is this too far for us? <laughs> it was, it was interesting. That's all All I have to say on it. Let me know what you guys think. And then after that, I'm going to use Survivor Shader by the Army Painter, the black shader. So if you've got the black one, Nuln Oil, sorry, by uh, Citadel, I had to remember. I'm just going to put that on all the skeleton and let that go around the edges. It's going to make it pop out and, and just stand out a little better as well as making it look a lot more charred. And then we're going to use gl Glory Red, not Glory. Glory Red would be a nice color. Is there a Glory Red? Let me know in the comments below about that as well. Point me to it. I need to own a glory red. I'm just going to very, very carefully dry brush that over the skeleton and just make it look a bit more like it's glowing around the edges as though it's quite hot. And then as normal with my, my figures, I'm just going to paint the base very, very quickly, very easily, easily changeable later on. If anybody is unsure what to do with a base, just paint it black. Uh, you can't go wrong and you can change it at any point and you've not wasted a ton of effort on it. So I'm just painting the base black. That's going to make the fire pop out nicely. And that's it. We're all done. 24 minutes. Would wet blending be better? Possibly. Certainly not if I did it because it would be the first time I've ever attempted it. But dry brushing, 24 minutes. Can't complain about that. I think he looks great for 24 minutes work. Can't complain. I think Benson and I spent more time debating whether it was controversial or not over how long it took me so i could have painted like all of them in the time we had that little discussion anyway hope you enjoyed that hope you like looking at some fire and that's come across nicely and it's giving you some hints and tips towards painting fire as well as this fire team zero model and thank you all very much for watching let us know what you think in the comments below